Hey guys, uh, we are in our engine department. So, and um, we thought about, we just give you an idea what is the difference between the GPC turbo, what's the difference between a GD2545 or GD2560 or a GD28 or whatever. So, actually, the difference GBC to the GT turbos. And um, I'm sorry to say, but I do not have a TDO4 turbo right by my hand. So I cannot tell you, I can tell you everything about the TDO4 turbo, but I can't show it you on a turbo. So sorry for that. So actually, let's say this is the TDO4 turbo. No, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, actually just, I will explain the difference about the TDO4s, the GT turbos and the GBC turbos. I do not want to compare the GBC turbos to the G25 and the EFRs because this is a next gen turbocharger. It's way more expensive. But I think the comparison between the GBC, the TDO4 and the GT Turbo, I think it does make sense because this is pretty common in the Miata world. So here we go. First of all, um, Garrett or our Garrett dealer, uh, so nice shout out to Frank, um, came to us and said, hey, Garrett got a solution for you guys, which could work on the Miatas really well, special for around 300 horsepower. Um, do you think this is something you are interested in? And then they just came, brought me in the GBC Turbo. Um, I said, okay, what's the, the gain of a GBC Turbo to the GT Turbos? So actually, um, Garrett uh, manufactured or designed that turbo to have a cheaper option to the GT Turbos. I think in the next coming months, this turbocharger uh, line will get off the market. So they will just have uh, parts to repair these turbochargers, but they will not have uh, any more whole turbochargers. But this is something what I think uh, we never got a say like something like a conclusion from Garrett. So it could be possible that these all these three lines are always produced side by side. Um, so let's start of all. First thing is what is the difference GT Turbo, GBC Turbo, and a TDO4. A TDO4 turbo is like everyone knows, a stock turbo from a Subaru. You cannot really get them pretty new. Actually, what we did in the past months, we always uh, ordered Chinese exhaust and um, um, uh, front housings and the middle part of the turbo. So actually, what is the turbo? So it's, it's this part in the middle. Um, we ordered this once at Owens or at the company in England. The problem is that the company in England said, okay, we do not uh, develop or we do not invest any more time or money into the turbos. So it was for us nearly impossible to reach them anymore for a normal pricing. And then we said, okay, we do sell the last TDO4 turbos, which we have here in stock. And we are done with that. We are done with it with them. So um, power wise, a lot of people were asking, are the GBC turbos more have them more power than the TDO4 turbos. Actually, what we saw on the GBC turbos, they really, they come in more early. So what we will do for you, we'll show you in the next video when we are driving with the car with the GBC turbo, we will compare some um, locks uh, on boost and we will compare some dyno charts that you can see where we are with the TDO4s, where we are with the GD2560 or GD2554 and where we are with the GBC Turbo so and the TDO4. So what we saw when we have the directly comparison between the TDO4 and the GBC Turbo, there's one thing what I really like on them, they do not have water cooling. A lot of people say, ah, this is not the best thing and you say you like it, but this is more part of price. Everything right. So it, I think it's at the end of the day, it's better to have a water cooled turbo but what you see here, you have um, water temperatures on a boosted car, which are less, when you compare it to a water-cooled turbocharger, which are less than 15 degrees at track full speed than you normally see on a um, boosted MX-5 T2560 without a thermostat or something. You see something around 95, 96 degrees. And with this ones, we see 85 to 84 degrees, 83. So they are way, way cooler. So at least five to seven degrees always. It's easier to install them. And on the power side, these turbos catch up more early and boost up 
to the ref limiter. This is always at 0.7 bar of boost. So never at 1.1.2. 1 .1 we are doing this now with the biggest GBC turbo on a forged engine that we are going to 1.2 bar of boost and then we will see how early it's catching it in and how long it will boost up to the ref limiter. Now comparison to the GT turbos. GT2560, GT2554. So these turbos actually they are okay, but what we saw, special on the 1.6, you really can see the big lack of a GD2560. So these turbos, they really need a lot of time to catch in. And when they, they are catching in, in spooling, comparison to a GBC turbo, about 1200 RPM later. They do not spool 1200 RPM later, but you always have that catch up point in an MX-5 or in a turbocharged car where the car comes out of the corner, you flat out the car and then you, you really feel it. Let's say when you are in 2500 RPM, you will see on the GD2560 that the car is really pushing something around 3300, 3400, 3600. But what we see on the GBC turbos, they're just catching in something around 800, 1800 and you have the catch-up point at 242526. So we are 800 RPM earlier in spool in exact the same setup. So when we have the Kraken manifold and we have a, a three inch downpipe ending in a two and a half inch downpipe, it's always the same. So these turbos spooling way more early. Nice thing on the GD2560 or the GD2554, when you catching on the boost, a little bit later, you will always have the good point that it's boosting up to the ref limiter. Comparison to the TD04, they do not boost up to the left ref limiter. They, they try to, but you always see at 6,700 RPM. Depends a bit on the engine. If it's a BP04 uh, in, in an NA, a BP4W in NB, or a VVT in an NBFL, they always do not deliver more power up from 6,700 to 6,800 RPM. You do not feel it when you sit in the car, but you actually can see it in your V table in the ECU that you do not have to give the car more fuel because it will not get faster. So, and this is something funny because the GBC turbos, what we saw here uh, with our airbox in our setup, they boost, they start up the boost more early and they keep the boost up way longer up to the ref limiter. In my ideas, when you run a car and an MX-5 is always really reliable on track, something around 250 to 280 horsepower, the GBC Turbo is in my eyes the best tool which you can run. You have less temperature in the cooling system, you have a faster spooling and you have power to the ref limiter. Now we have three sizes. We're discussing always about two turbochargers from the GT series. We have just the one TD04 turbo, so this is like one size fits all. But we, we have here um, at least three different sizes. We have the GBC 7020, I think. Then we have the GBC 20, and then we have the GBC 22. It should be these three numbers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think these three are. So what we are using, we're using the smallest one for the 1.6, the middle one for the 1.8, and the one bigger for the forged 1.8 or the forged 1.6, because we always want to have a good driving car with a nice drivability, a nice flat torque curve. And because I do not have to tell you, when we catch up 1.3 bar of boost at 3000 RPM, it will destroy your transmission like you can see. So if you ask me if I could have three turbos and all of them for free, and I want to build up an MX-5 for track for something around 250 to 280 horsepower, or at least 300, and somebody would ask me, you have D3's options, which are the way to go. I would always go for the GBC because it's the newest technology. And now we just talk about the technology of the turbo itself. So these turbos are really, really old school. The GT series T04 is really an old school turbo. But uh, we have a billet compression side, which you can see here. So it's really nice build. Um, we have a pretty small housing, so we have a lot of space in the engine bay. Um, we have a full casted. Uh, exhaust side and we have a machined exhaust wheel. This is also uh, a billet part so the whole turbo is really nice build. They come with a 0.5 bar of boost wastegate and you just use them, chop them in and you have no water cooling and this 
is pretty gain on the water temperature side. So if you have any more questions about that turbos, because we use them a lot, I think we sold about already 50s, 50 of them. Um, if you have questions about them, we can show you videos. We can also talk about more technology side. I would probably ask Frank to come over that he just gets more into the technical side than I do now. But just for you guys, if you drive Miata, if you're thinking about changing the turbo or if you want to go for a new build, I think always the, the power level, keep it in mind, I think that's the right turbo to go. If you want to go way behind the 300 number, we can also talk about that. I'm a really Garrett fanboy, I just have to tell you. So I would go for G25. I really like the style of the turbos. I really like how they go. They really boost in early and they are not that big like EFR. But the EFR turbos, you know, some guys in our Craig Peters in America showed us how much potential the EFR got. But I'm more on the G25 side. So if you're interested, and hearing about more technical details on EFR, G25, GBC, GT Turbo, TDO4, just give us a shout, drop it in the comments, and we'll get somebody from Garrett to us um, who will get more and more into details about it, and we will also give you an idea how the cars are going. So, see you in the next video. Bye.